on this one word. I've been praying about it for days. I've been praying. It's a very powerful word. Can we read, please, from Revelation chapter 1 and verse number 9 and 10. I want to title my message, In the Spirit. Revelation 1, 9 and 10. I, John, who was also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Saying, I'm Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. What thou seest, write in a book. And send it unto seven churches which are in Asia, and to Ephesus, and to Smyrna, and unto Pergamos and Titeria and Sardis, and to Philadelphia and Laodicea. He heard a voice. And then verse number 12, And I turned to see that voice that spoke with me. And being turned, I saw golden, seven golden candlesticks. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day. You know, one of the most obvious questions that people might have is it God's Spirit in me or I in the Spirit? What is the real truth? Is it God's Spirit in me which has got tremendous you know, support in the Word of God? The Bible says the Holy Spirit dwells inside of us. Then what about the business of being in the Holy Ghost? Do you assume that John was not in the Spirit before this? What does it mean? Of course, John was in the Spirit. John moved in the Spirit because if you're not living in the Spirit, then you're living in the flesh. Do you listen to that? If you're not living in the spirit, you're living in the flesh. So John was in the spirit. But the Bible says, one day on the Lord's day, he was in the spirit. I want people of God to understand what it means. You know, there's a, there's a writer who wrote about this, a commentator. He said this. Anytime that word is used, it's not a normal time. It's a time where... Any, everything natural in, your, in you, everything as natural senses connected to the outside world is suspended. And your connection to the invisible world is opened. That's the time revelations come. That's the time you'll hear the voice of God. That will be the time that future plans of God will be revealed. You know, it has happened to many men of God. One of the most powerful stories, Acts chapter 10 verse 10, where it says that Peter was in a trance. And in that trance, that means it's no more his natural mind, it's no more his natural thinking, it's not more, no more his natural feelings. In that trance, he had a vision. He saw something in the future. He saw something that didn't make sense. And I believe in the name of Jesus. In the days to come, some of us are going to have an encounter Hallelujah. with the Holy Ghost in such a way it will not be something that you thought about in your mind. It's not something that you created in your thinking. It will be something that came from God. Something that will bypass even your thinking. And it's going to be something that is connected into invisible realm. You know what? Let me make this very clear. Some people have fallen into a spirit and have that experience. Some people have gone into a trance and have had the future given to them. Some people have had experiences where they're sitting and all of a sudden they, they saw something that is beyond them. 
them. Let me tell you, I believe in the name of Jesus. In the days to come, we will witness such ministries in the Holy Ghost if you believe it's a Holy Spirit that can take me to the next level if you believe that can you lift up your voice and shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord it will be the Holy Ghost now listen I've had that few times in my life you know just about to come to Canada I had that experience after coming to Canada one night I had that experience I, I didn't even know it was no more in my control. But I started seeing things in the future. Before the apostolic ministries were started, I had a wonderful experience where I saw nations open up. I heard the voice of God. Let me tell you, I believe those experiences not just in the past. In the days to come, some of you will have experiences in the Holy Ghost where you will see things in the invisible. You will start seeing things into the future. Those of you who want that experience, can you lift up your voice and shout an amen in the house of the Lord. Now listen, I want to bring a principle here. I like principle. I don't want to get too excited and emotional. I want to bring a principle here. Are you ready for this? Amen. Are you ready? Yes. Now the principle, let me make this very clear. This is for, this is a little, more, little more intellectual. Now let's listen. You know, I love Paul, Apostle Paul. So I've told this sometimes in my teachings. Anytime I get a chance to go to Tim Hortons with Apostle Paul, because I know you would sure love Tim Hortons. You know, I don't want to talk to him about going to heaven and all that mysterious experience that he had. I want to know him as a human being. I want to know what he thought. I want to know, did he like butter chicken? <laughs> and as a human being, I want to know him more. I want to know what was the, the mindset behind some of the things that he said. What was his, his, his nature? What was his motivating factor? And in the last, you know, in the last, for some time, I've been thinking the same about Jesus. You know, it, it's not many times we see Jesus acting. But what was the thought process of Jesus? I want to know about it. What made him act in a certain way? I always wanted to know. And, and by the way, because the Bible says we should have the mind of Christ. So in order to have the mind of Christ, we should know how the mind of Christ function. Are you with me? Yeah. You know, so I didn't, I didn't get, I went through a lot of scriptures, but believe me, it's not easy to go and dig into what Jesus was thinking. We know sometimes he got angry, sometimes he spoke words, but what was he thinking? What made him say those words? And today, the Lord gave me a glimpse. And if I'm going to follow in the footsteps of Jesus... I want that to be my life. You have to go to the book of Matthew. Now listen carefully. Matthew and 22 and 23. You can go home and read that. Matthew 22, 23. In those two chapters, people are coming to, to trick Jesus by asking silly questions. Come on. They wanted to, Bible says it very clearly, they did this to trap Jesus. They wanted to entangle Jesus. That's what the King James Version says. Entangle Jesus. So before we go there, they, they came and asked some few questions to Jesus. Now listen carefully. You know, how many of you know truth? Every truth has got two aspects. Come on. The first aspect, aspect is a principal part of it. The second aspect is the practical part of it. Truth cannot just be a principle, it has to be a practice. Amen. Come on, come on. Amen. You, know, you know, the principle part of it and then the practical part of it. I want everybody to say principle part and the practical part. So we need to know what the principle is and we also need to know what the practicality of it, the application of it. Every truth has got you know, principle and application. Now listen carefully. Let's put some of the questions well, that they asked Jesus. Are you ready for this? They, they, one day they saw Jesus, you know, riding on a donkey, receiving the praise of the people. They said, Hosanna to the king. And, and then Jesus went to the temple, cleared the temple, and he said, this is my house, and my house shall be called a, a house of prayer. So what Jesus did was shocking. The Bible says they were absolutely disturbed. That's the sense we get by what Jesus did. The actions of Jesus were shocking. So they came to Jesus and said, Jesus, 
You know, why do you do all this? Who gave you the right to do all this? Jesus gave a counter question. Where did the baptism of John come from? Was it from heaven or was it from man? Now, why did Jesus bring that? I'll tell you why. You know, let me, I want everybody to look at me, please. Anytime, anytime you have a principle and you believe in it, the practical will become easy. So Jesus in his core inside believes, he knows he is a son of God. He is a king of kings. God has sent him. He is a king of Israel. He is a king. Whether people accept it in the natural or not, he knows inside. And whatever he did was just the expression of it. Come on. Let me tell you, if you know something in your heart strongly, the expression is obvious. Come on, somebody. I'm coming to an important point here, based on what I'm preaching today. The expression is so easy afterwards. If you know that Christ is a savior, you will act like, likewise. If you know he's a healer, you will act likewise. If you know the principle is secured, your action is going, not going to be a contradiction, not going to be a problem. How many of you want to say, God, everything that you've spoken to my heart, let it become so strong. The action will, even though it might be shocking, it's going to be obvious. Now listen, so Jesus putting this counter, he's making this, this point very clear. He said to them, now this is a problem. You know, the Pharisees, if, if John's baptism, and listen carefully, if John's baptism was from, or God, John was from God, then what he did also was from God. Meaning, he also said that Jesus Christ is a Messiah. Come on. Everything that he said was from God. If he is from God, everything that he did, everything that he said was from God. Now Jesus is trapping them. Do you believe he's from God or from men? Now the problem is, if they say from God, the action is missing. If he's from God, then Jesus would ask, why didn't you get baptized? Whew. If they say he's not from God, then it's already established among the people that he is from God. Are you with me? So the Pharisees, for the Pharisees, now listen carefully, they, they cannot be here nor there. So the Pharisee found a place to be in the middle. Anytime somebody is in the middle, your life will not produce fruit. You know, if you believe something, you have to prove it. Come on, if you believe something, your action should show it. You cannot be in the middle. Neither here nor there. The greatest revival of Israel happened under the ministry of Elijah. And the first word that he said, how can you be in between two opinions? If God is God, worship him. If Baal is Baal, God, worship him. You cannot be stuck in between two points. And I believe in the days to come, God is going to raise up some people who will not just be stuck in the middle. They will know for sure what God has put into their hearts and the action will definitely show it. We don't want to be stuck in the middle. We want to be led by what we believe. Come on. What is Jesus saying? If the core part of your life is established, then the actions must show it. So Jesus said a parable. He said there was a man who had two sons. And I've got two kids. So the man went and told his sons, Go and do something. What did he ask them to do? Uh, go to a field. Pluck some bananas or whatever it is. Go do something. It required an action. The first son said, Father, I will. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And the Bible said, Jesus said, but he did not go. The second guy said, I am not going now. But while he was sitting, he thought, my goodness, my father asked me to do something. I think I should do it. And then after a while, he went and did what the father asked him. So Jesus said, now tell me who did the will of his father. The first one who said, I will, showed the intent, showed excitement, verbally approved, but no action. 
Or the guy who didn't show any intent, but he showed it with an action. There was no excitement. I think it's important. If you are doing the will of God, it's not just in words. It is not just in excitement. Let's do it in action. Come on, somebody. I'm not reading those scriptures. It's very clear in the Bible. Very clear. You know, if you're doing God, if you know God is in it, if you know it's from God, you have to know words will, will be enough. No intent will be enough. No form of, you know, excitement would be enough. It has to be action and action only. God loved the world that he sent his only son. It is not just the intent of God, but it's the action of God on the cross of Calvary that saved mankind. How many of you want to say, let my faith be a faith of action? If you believe that, can you lift up your voice and shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord? God, if I believe something... I want to act on it. Oh, come on, people of God. How many of you know we have this kind of people? If God says something, we have the intent. Oh, I want to do it. Oh, I will do it. Let me tell you, people of God, intent means nothing without an action. Oh, we have people who get excited. But that means nothing. God's word says, I mean, faith without work is dead. How many of you want to say, God, I don't want to be like the Pharisees. It is from God, but I will not act on it. If it is from God, I'm going to act. Come on. Son. If it is from God, my action will prove it. And how many of you want to make a thunderous declaration in your spirit? Anything from God, it will be shown in action. No more stuck in the middle. No more stuck in nowhere, no man's land. If it is from God, let my action show it. That's what Jesus said. It's only through action. If you believe it's from God, why don't you get baptized? If you don't believe, forget it. It's okay. But you can't be in the middle. How many of you want to say, God, let my faith increase? Come on. Action. Now, let me go ahead. So Jesus, the Bible says the moment Jesus asked them as a question, the Pharisees departed. They couldn't handle it. It was too hot for them to handle. Jesus put them in a situation. It's either from God. If it's from God, you have to show it with the action. You know, I want to have a faith where it's not just making some sound. Oh, come on. Not showing an intent, but with action. I want to fulfill the will of my father. Only those people who want to say, God, give me the grace to do that. Come on. It's so important that Jesus says that's the key. And for Jesus, anytime he believes something, it is action. There's no conflict at all between what he believed and what he acted on. Now, let me go ahead. And Jesus, so this kept on happening for days. So one day, Jesus decided to stop this business of people trying to trap him. So Jesus asked the question. Of, do you know what question he asked him? Uh-huh. And the Bible says from that point onwards, nobody ever questioned Jesus. One question from Jesus, it is a knockout punch. It's over. Do you know what question that he asked them? Woo! Matthew chapter 22 and verse number 41 onwards. Now listen, Matthew twenty-two forty-one. 41. When the Pharisees were gathered, now they have come again with the arsenal of trapping Jesus. Jesus asked them, question, yeah. Saying, what think you of Christ? Whose son is he? They said unto him, the son of David. He said unto them, how then doth David in spirit call him Lord? Saying, this is from Psalm 110. The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. It is the word used there for Lord, both Lord, Yahweh, and the, and the word Adonai for God. How come David called his son Lord? And if they, David then call him Lord, how is he his son? Who? <laughs> Hmm. Next verse. And no man was able to answer him a word. Neither durst any man from that day forth ask him. It was case closed. All of them went back. What is happening here? This is a key. 
Let me ask you to look, look at me. It's important. One day, David is sitting and he knows his son. There'll be kids coming from his loins. He knows the birth of a future king from his loins. But suddenly he calls the son that he's going to have as God. How can you do that? If, I were, if somebody were to see David say this, they would go and ask David, David, what's wrong with you? Do you want to say, your son is God? How can your son be God? David, I'm sure, would say, I, I don't think I said that. You guys are dreaming. Because in the natural, he cannot make such a statement. In the natural, he will never make such a statement. You can shake him, you can ask him, you can question him. He will say, you guys are gone crazy or maybe deaf. I did not say such a thing. Because it is a contradiction of the highest order. How can a son that's born to David become his God? It doesn't make sense. And, 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 and if you try to tell David to explain it, he says, I don't even know what to explain. Because there's nothing I said that needs to be explained. Because it doesn't happen. How can somebody make a statement so contradictory, so shocking, which doesn't make sense? And that's the reason the natural people could not give an answer. They said, you know, we don't have any more answer because that caught them. They were trapped in their own trap. That's the wisdom of Jesus. You know what is the key there? You know, Jesus saying, but David did not say that in the natural. He said it in the spirit. And I heard the Lord speak to me. When you are in the spirit, you will make some statements. Oh. Come on, somebody. You will make some declarations. You will make some processes. You will say things that will make no sense in the natural. Let me tell you, some of you are going through financial crisis. When you are in the spirit, you will start making some statements about how you are going to bless nations. It will not make sense in the natural. But let me tell you, how many of you want to start moving in the Holy Ghost? If that's your desire, can you shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord? Come on, somebody. I was reading the story of YWAM. I think it's there in 210 nations. And then it says how a man, a simple man, 18, 19, 20 years old, of old man, was sitting in his room and suddenly he heard a voice from God. He saw tens of thousands of children coming from around the nations and coming together. He saw them from all the nations. It didn't make sense to him in the natural because he was just a college student. But let me tell you, in the spirit, he saw something. If you ask him to explain, he cannot explain. But let me tell you the answer is in that word, in the spirit. And I'm going to make a declaration here. Some of you in the days to come will have an experience in the Holy Ghost. You will get up, get up in the morning and say something which will make no sense in the natural. But you are declaring something in the supernatural. No eyes have seen it. No ears have heard it. Something so powerful. How many of you want to say, God, I'm sick and tired of being in the natural. I want to be in the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. If that's your desire, can you shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord? I want to be in the Holy Ghost. Some of you are going to declare things that is quite opposite to what you see today. Some of you are going to make some statements which will not make sense to you or to your wife. Some of you are going to say things that will, if somebody were to come and repeat those words to you, you will say, you didn't even say those words. Because it's going to be so powerful. And how many of you want to say, God, I want to move in the Holy Ghost. Jesus made a statement. David made a statement which no human being can understand in the natural. My son is God. He's my Lord. And Jesus threw that to the Pharisees and said, now you explain that. Let me tell you, no human mind can explain the things of the Lord. If somebody asks you to explain it, you have no answer. But you are speaking in the spirit. Only the people who are spiritual 
will understand the things of the Spirit. No natural mind can understand it. Now let me ask you, do you want to have a ministry? Do you want to make some statements? Do you want to have a prayer life? Do you want to have a declaration? Do you want to have something in your life but that is birth in the Holy Ghost? Come on, hallelujah. If that's your desire, only those people who have, want to have that, can you make yourself known in the house of the Lord? Hallelujah, God, I need that, I need that, I need that. I have been praying for the last many months. God, I need to have a ministry in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Spirit. Somebody say, in the Holy Spirit. Is there anybody in this room want to say, God, I want to have a ministry of the Spirit where my mind is cut off. My thinking will not cooperate. <laughs> Come on. My natural senses are suspended. <laughs> and He is now doing things in my heart. I'm seeing things beyond the natural. Only those people who want to say, God, not based on what I see today, I want to be in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Because the moment you're in the Holy Ghost, you're going to see things as God sees it. Amen. You're going to see in the un un unseen world. You're going to see what's going to happen in the future. You're going to see the throne of heaven. You're going to see what's going to happen to the kingdom of darkness. You're going to see the future of your family. You're going to see the future of your church. Come on, hallelujah. How many of you want to say, God, I need such an anointing in the days to come to be in the Holy Ghost. Only those people who want to have a vision in the Holy Ghost. Can you make a response in the house of the Lord? You see things in the Holy Ghost. You pray in the Holy Ghost. You move in the Holy Ghost. You declare things in the Holy Ghost. You know what's going to happen in the future in the Holy Ghost. Come on. It's not natural. It is in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Four times in the book of Revelation, it says John was in the Holy Ghost. And every four times, he saw something. He saw something beyond the earth. He saw something beyond today. And God showed him, hallelujah, the throne in heaven. God showed him what's going, to, what's going to happen to the kingdom of darkness. God showed him what's going to happen to the kingdom of God. Everything was revealed. Let me tell you, how many of you want to be in the Holy Ghost? Yes. Brothers and sisters, I know I've been there. And I long for it more. When I didn't know if I could have one church, I fell into a trance and I still remember what he showed me. He showed me nations. He showed me faces. And I sense in my spirit that in the Holy Ghost. In the Holy Ghost, seeing things, declaring things, is going to come to somebody and it will absolutely blow your mind because it's going to suspend everything in the natural. Come on, hallelujah. Those of you who want that, can you release your faith right now in the house of the Lord, in the name of Jesus? It will suspend everything in the natural. Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Important. What will happen when you see in the Holy Ghost? Everything in the natural will be suppressed. Because God had to take David to a place. Because no way in the natural David could prophesy, say, one day I will bow before my son and worship him. And that's the reason Jesus said, David spoke in the spirit. In the spirit. Impossible things. And listen carefully. The Isle of Patmos. The very meaning of the word Patmos is my death. It is called an island where it's sterile. Nothing grows there. The only reason that island existed was for people to be banished. The king Domitian banished people into the island so that they will stay there with hunger and with all kinds of animals around them, they will die. 
You could see the bones of people that have died scattered around you. A man who was almost 95 years of age was a pastor at that time in the church of Ephesus is banished into that island. When everybody listen, natural situation. When he opens his eyes, he sees dead bodies. His mind tells him he can't handle it anymore. He's weak, too weak. His spirit is almost giving away. This man who needs the continuous support of people at that age doesn't have anybody. When the Lord's day came, he would have remembered his church back in Ephesus. What will be happening there? Maybe somebody is preaching. Maybe Anison is preaching. Something. He remembered his church. But everything is against him in the natural. The only outcome for him in the natural is that he will die like anybody else. It's called sterile land. Nothing good will come out of it. And he says a word, I was in this place for the word of God. Let me tell you, people have suffered for the word of God. I know what it means. I was on this island because of the word of God, banished in pain, in fear, no hope. That's what John's situation is. Brothers and sisters, you need to understand something. When God gives you a word, that word itself will test you. The Bible says the word tested Joseph. It is not his brothers. It was a word that tested him. It was a testing time. You know, I want to make a declaration because I know that is a declaration that's going to release something in this church. The three things that I value in my life. Number one, the word of God. I believe every word of God is true. Number two, I believe, I appreciate the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number three, I believe in the leadings of the Spirit. He still leads His people. I don't take that lightly because every time He has let me, I've gone into His presence for days and I know I've cried before Him. And I heard the devil tell me, those three things will be attacked in your life. And I want to make a declaration today. The God of John is my God. In the next few days, in the days to come, my faith in God's word will be more. My belief in the Holy Ghost will be greater. And the leadings of the Holy Spirit is going to be more in my life. Come on, somebody who wants to join me together, shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord. That's what God wants to do. So John is in the island. And suddenly on that Sunday... Listen to me, I'm going to end here. Nobody around him, he was in the spirit. That means the spirit took over. And from that moment onwards, he did not see the bone. He did not see death. He did not see destruction. He did not see the Isle of Patmos. He didn't see the devil. He didn't see all the negative things that he was seeing. Instead of that, he saw someone. Hallelujah. He saw someone. Come on, hallelujah. His eyes were like fire. He had a air, hair like of a wool. I mean, his garments were golden. His legs were like brass, like a furn from a furnace. And he was the son of God and he declared I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end one move in the Holy Ghost vision changed what you saw changed 
What you felt changed. What you thought changed. What you believed changed. Everything changed. One move in the Holy Ghost. And the Lord told me that's coming upon some free people in the name of Jesus. If you believe that, come on. Can you lift up your voice and shout a hallelujah in the house of the Lord. Your family is not dying. Your children are not dying. Your life is not coming to an end. Your future is not hopeless. You have a great future in the name of Jesus. If you believe, the Holy Spirit is going to give me a different vision. <laughs> Only those people. Can you lift your voice and shout and agree and amen in the house of the Lord? <laughs> The Lord told me something so beautiful today. And he said, don't worry. Don't worry. One move in my spirit. You will hear something different. You will see something different. Let me tell you something. I'm going to just pray now. How many of you know, if, I, if anybody goes to Isle of Patmos... When you write a letter to some of your friends, you will say the misery of that island, what you saw, what you felt, what you knew in that island. But John did not even make one mention of the Isle of Patmos. He said, I, John, the vision, the revelation that Jesus showed me. The Lord says to me, when you are in the spirit, the devil might have done this, to destroy your vision, God says, I'm going to increase it. Amen. Can somebody make it personal today? You are not going to die. You're coming out with much more fruitfulness. If you believe that, can you? Can you make some joyful shout of praise in the house of the Lord? The Lord says, that's the ministry of the Holy Ghost. That's the ministry of the Holy Ghost. You're going to see different. You're going to have a different perception. You're going to see things differently. You're going to see your future different. You're going to see everything different. Are you ready to pray right now? God says the devil showed you something about your life. The devil showed you something about your future. The devil showed you something that's in your present situation. But the Lord says in the days to come, you will have a ministry in the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, you are not seeing what the devil showed you. You are seeing heaven. You are seeing the kingdom of God. You are seeing the power of God. Woo! Can I pray right now? Can I say this? Some of you whom the devil attacked in the last few months. The devil did that in order to attack your faith, your vision, your, 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 your fruitfulness and everything in your life. Everything that you held precious in your life came under attack. But the Lord says, because of my spirit. Your anointing is not going down. Your vision is not going down. Your ministry is not going down. It's only going to increase. If you believe that, can you tell the devil, I am victorious in the name of Jesus. Come on, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Somebody needs to make this a moment of victory. Somebody needs to make this a moment of overcoming in the name of Jesus. You know what happened on that day? The devil did everything in the life of John, the revelator. John, the disciple, in order to, for his life to think about only Patmos, future, few more days. You know, he might even thought, who will bury me? Come on, 95 years of age. How is he going to survive this Patmos? He, he is not afraid to die. Because he's a servant of God. He has walked with Jesus. He knows he will be in heaven. The devil did everything in order to cause despair. And for him to come to resignation. But one move of the Holy Ghost. There was a vision that came. And superimposed. His natural condition. Oh. From that moment onwards, it is not the, the despairing nature of Patmos that stands in front of him. It is the glory of the King of Kings. 
is the glory of the Savior. Come on, hallelujah. How many of you want to say, God, I want that in my life. I want the ministry of the Holy Ghost in my life. If that's your prayer, can you put your hands together, give the Lord a praise in the house of the Lord. He is going to superimpose on the natural. He is going to superimpose on the natural situation. Every eye is closed. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Shantaloria. God says about your ministry, about your children, about your future, about your health, about everything in your life, including your finance and the days to come. Let me tell you, God is about to suspend your natural reasoning and is going to take you into the Holy Ghost. Come on. Hallelujah. Show you things that you have never seen before. Only those people say, I receive it. Can you shout an amen in the house of the Lord? I receive it. And look at what the Lord said to to John. Write what I show you. It's not what you sense in the natural. It's not what you see in the island of Patmos. Write what I show you. The Lord says, I'm going to give my people an understanding. I'm going to take them into deeper waters of the Holy Spirit. And then they are going to speak what the Spirit shows them. They are going to act what the Spirit asks them to act. They are going to behave in a way which will be quite contrary in the natural. But they are being led by the Holy Ghost. Come on, hallelujah. Do you want that kind of a lifestyle? If you believe that, can you put your hands together? Give a Lord a shout of praise in the house of the Lord. Somebody say, all things are possible. Come on, hallelujah. My God can do all things. Oh, Rabbi Shante. Let me pray. Some of you are in the Isle of Patmos. And your mind tells you what it means. But you want to be in the spirit. And listen to what God wants to show you. Only those people lift up your hand will pray and close. Lift up your hand wherever you are. It will be just the opposite what you are going to see. You are not going to die. Come on. This is not the end. I said this is not the end. I said this is not the end. Tell the Lord. Lord, in the natural, I have nothing else to see. No hope. But take me into the spirit. That I will see things that will superimpose. Lord, I release that upon the church. Right now, I command demonic spirits holding people in the natural get out of their lives. I cancel the lives of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Get out of their lives in the name of the Lord. Let people start seeing in the spirit. Let people start prophesying in the spirit. Let people start worshipping in the spirit. Let people start declaring in the spirit. Come on, somebody is getting released right now in the name of Jesus. Shura Rabba Shande. Hey. Hey. The Lord says everything that you saw in the natural is real. Is real. You see it, it's, it's, it's evidentially real. It is re- irrefutably real. But God says he wants to suspend that vision. He wants to suspend that vision and give your vision into the unseen. Come on, hallelujah. Do you want to be in the Holy Ghost? And we declare in the name of Jesus, we will have the Holy Spirit taking over. Holy Spirit giving us a vision. And we will see heaven. We will see the throne in heaven. We will see the destiny of nations. We will see the destiny of peoples. We will see the coming of the Lord. We will see the glory of the kingdom. Hallelujah. We thank you Lord for what you have done. Take me into the spirit. Take me in the spirit, Lord. In Jesus' precious name we pray and everybody said...